welcome. Let's stitch some spring birds. So here's a little preview of what we're stitching. I'm just going to stitch this teeny tiny guy. Uh, you just stitch them all how you'd stitch a small one, right? So let's, let's keep it short here. Okay, so if you have the kit, your fabric's going to look something like this. If not, you're going to need to transfer your design to your fabric first. Uh, one quick note about the floss. Your floss is going to come like this. When you're pulling your floss, make sure you pull from the side with the number. I like to pull hmm, maybe a foot and a half, two feet. Snip. Okay. And then you're going to put this on your needle. So what I actually want to show you is... I just went to another color here just to demonstrate how to separate your strands. So when you're using those pinks, you're going to use a full strand, right? So this is six individual ply making up this strand. That's what we want for our flowers. We're going to use that full thickness. But for parts of the birds, we're going to use one and two strands of floss. So to separate your floss, apologies if you already know this, I just want to let people know who don't. Um, you can just pull out one of these strands if you pull out one at a time, it's going to be a lot easier. You're not going to snag. You can see how it's kind of bunching up as I'm pulling. And that goes away. And then here's my single strand. And you're going to put that on a teeny tiny eye needle. Let's see. So I have this guy here. I was just licking my thread really quick. This is a size 9. And that's what I'm using for my my single strands and my double strand. Went ahead and threaded all my needles ahead of time, except this one that I was gonna demonstrate very elegantly. Okay, I did get it. <laughs> so there you go, it might take a couple tries. If you're having a hard time threading two strands through these tiny eye needles, you can always grab a double length of floss Similarly, um, just thread that single strand through your needle and then stitch with the combined floss so doubled up on itself, okay? To start, we are going to do the eye. Uh, I went ahead and just did little knots at the ends of my strands. You can start your floss like that. You can start your floss with a fancier knot. You can, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I'm just starting with a knot because it is easier for me to do when I'm making a video. Okay, so I have two strands of this really, really dark brown and I'm doing a padded satin stitch. So when I have a, a shape that's really tiny like this, my padded satin stitch is pretty much just like two layers of satin stitch. And the reason we're doing it padded is just so it stands out a little bit above the other stitches of the bird. So there's one row or level, I guess, layer. That's probably the right word. And then I'm just going to stitch another oops, satin stitch layer on top. So if you're a super beginner and I dove in too fast, I apologize. Please check out my beginner video. Sometimes it's hard to know how much, how much information to include on these pattern videos. I want to make sure beginners feel welcome, but I also don't want to bore my experienced stitchers 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 okay hopefully I can pull it together for this video guys okay <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of jump ahead in the instructions so I did my padded satin for my eye I'm actually gonna come over and do my beak since I already have this color on my floss I'll leave it up to you guys if you want to do it at the same time or wait until I say to do it in the instructions Basically, you know, does it make sense to do this stitching on top of the stitching I'm going to do here or or not? I think either way is going to be fine. So this beak is really small, but I'm going to go ahead and just do two 
two stitches to make this beak. Okay, and then I'm actually gonna keep going with this color. And I'm gonna jump all the way down to my legs. And these are split stitch. But really, these legs are so tiny, you could just do a single, single straight stitch if you want. There I am splitting. You'll notice I'm doing a back split. Also, if this color doesn't look like yours, it's because it's a little bit different. I couldn't find all the colors for the demonstration, so I just grabbed some that would be close enough. All right. So I really want to just go ahead and stitch the branch while I'm there, but I am going to be good and follow the instructions, which, you know, you don't have to never have to follow the instructions. Okay, I am going to start stitching the bird. So I have the color on top here. If you look at that first page of your instructions, you're going to see there is um, stitch direction guidelines that look something like this. So this is the direction of my back stitches. Basically, I call this, you know, radial from the center radial from the beak really is our starting point for all of these segments. And we're just going down and following the path of the body. All right, so I'm gonna start by the beak. And I'm basically just treating all these different shapes as individuals. So I'm gonna do this little like head piece first. Then I'm gonna do this wing piece. Then I'm gonna do the tail piece here, okay? And then come back and do the other colors. So the orange is all one piece and the white or off-white is all one piece. Okay, so for each of these pieces, I like to outline them first. So I'm just gonna do back stitch. Now, when I did my sample piece, I was really focusing on making these back stitches really, really neat, really, really tiny, really, really perfect. For this video, I'm just gonna do the best I can. <laughs> but that was my intention to make really, really neat stitches, really tiny stitches to fill the shape. Oops. I just pulled in the tail. Okay, got it back out. So a back stitch, make sure you're going in the same hole. So for the eye, I'm just kind of going around it. I'm going right up to it and then popping out on the other side. For the larger birds, you may need to do a little more when you do that padded satin stitch for the eyes. You may need to... I mean, I think just two layers of satin would work, but you know, the, the larger your shape, your shape when you're doing a padded satin, you might want to outline the shape first. You could do that with a back stitch. You could do it with a split stitch. It doesn't matter because it's going to get covered, right? It's just you're trying to make like a base layer for your satin stitch. So here I'm doing another lap on my back stitch. You can see, I didn't, I just didn't really think about it, but if you want, you can, you know, you can line up these gaps or you can have them staggered with these irregular shapes we're doing. It's kind of hard to do too much 
thinking about that, I say just enjoy yourself and fill the shape and, and not worry about lining up or not lining those up. like that's pretty well filled again with these weird shapes sometimes it's not going to be perfect where you're doing like you know I do an outline and then I do the inline and then it's it's perfectly filled like you might have to come in and fill in some weird gaps with some random stitches that aren't necessarily part of your back stitch line and that's okay just fill the shape with little stitches so now I'm moving on to my next shape. You can see this gets very repetitive. <laughs> so if you did the winter birds pattern, you probably got really sick of doing chain stitch. So welcome to the spring birds pattern where you're gonna get really sick of back stitch. <laughs> and this is this is actually kind of how I did the um, the wildflower fawn pattern. I, I, you may have seen that one in my book. It's this cute little deer in a field of wildflowers, and she's all stitched with back stitch. Same kind of thing. So, what do you do if you do not like back stitch? Well, I invite you to fill these shapes with other stitches. You could do. Okay, let me pause for a second. So when I get to a shape like this where I have a point, I want to make sure that I have a stitch that ends right here. So you can see I, I can decide to do two stitches here or one stitch. I'm going to do one stitch. I probably should have just made my stitches overall shorter so I could have fit two stitches in. But I was busy talking. But it'll be fine. Okay, so then when I come back up the other way, make sure I go down this hole. And that's how you get like a, a sharp edge, right? I don't know how else you would do that, but... That's what I'm doing there. So, yeah, it, it's, you know, the same, same advice, the same technique if you're using a different linear stitch to fill these shapes. So you could do split stitch. You could do chain stitch. Stem stitch. Now if you want, you could do, like I said, you could do the split stitch, but you could actually kind of turn it into thread painting where you have some more blending between the colors. Whatever you choose to do, you can just, you know, stick with the guidelines for the stitch direction. I made it. Here we go again. So as I go, I have, here's where I have my floss, right? So I have my two strands and here's my tail. Now, when I first start, I have my tail pretty long on here, but I, you know, you don't want it so long that it's going to run into your stitches. So as I'm stitching, I'm pulling my tail along with me to kind of let out more floss as I need it. Okay. So by the end, my tail is going to be really short on here. And then that's when I need to, uh, weave, weave that in and grab a new strand of floss. Okay. Let's see here. So yeah, I stitched the original one of these and I, I had extra floss and I put it somewhere really special so I wouldn't lose it so I could use it for this video and that was a couple months ago so I have no idea I have no idea where they are I maybe I put them back I'm wondering if I actually just forgot what I was doing and just was cleaning up and put them back in my floss cabinet but I couldn't find the exact color, so, oh well. You could actually turn these birds into different birds. You could use different colors and make them be bluebirds, black birds. 
bird, any kind of bird. Make up a bird. You can use like variegated floss and just totally make up a bird. That'd be fun. Like rainbow birds. You should do that. That'd be so pretty. Um, what else can I tell you? I think this design will look really pretty on a jean jacket. That's what I want to do. Put it on a jacket on the back. I think that looks so pretty with these colors. But it's also going to look really pretty on the wall next to my winter bird's hoop and my summer bird's hoop that's coming. And then we'll do fall birds, autumn birds. Okay, I feel like we're not learning anything new here. You're just going to keep doing this. Maybe I should do another color just for fun. How about, I'll do the orange. Cause that one's a little bit, I did it a little bit different. I feel like I, I couldn't stop in the middle of that row. All right, let me grab my orange here. So, with the orange, start with the outline you can see you know how I was like oh, should we do the beak on top or is it okay to do it now like it looks fine I got I don't think it's getting lost under those stitches so do whatever whatever you want okay so for the orange Do the outline down the chest, but then I kind of turned it into rows instead of an outline shape. Because basically the shape I'm stitching right now is this, this shape that's made up of the orange and the white. So basically, this row then turns white. If it helps your brain to actually do it like that, like, okay, now I gotta finish that row and use the white, go ahead and switch colors and do that. I'm just gonna fake it and come back up. So what you end up getting is that kind of cleft between cleavage, I don't never know the right word, between the two colors. But there's also like movement between the two because they kind of continue the stitch direction, right? And you can see mine's not perfect. There's like, you know, irregularities in, in the outline. So that's what I did. You don't have to do it like that. If that bugs you, you can you can actually, you know, treat these like different shapes and actually, you know, stitch along that line to do the outline. I guess the reason I didn't choose to do that was because it's not, these two shapes aren't different shapes. Like I said, it's just two different colors on a shape. Versus like the wing is an actual different body part, right? So I would treat that differently. All right, I'm gonna stitch a little bit around the eye because I'm gonna come back and do some details there. I wanna make sure I have these stitches down first. So, Here's one thing I did do, if you want, uh, you can see my, my marker really faded, huh? So here's where I had that guideline. This is the, the disappearing ink, so it just disappears over time, and it really depends on where you live as far as how long it takes to disappear. Usually mine don't disappear that fast, but we actually 
do have some humidity happening. So for here, I'm going to actually follow my guideline down. Because we have kind of a, and this is a weird shape, right? It's because we have this like weird shape to fill right there. So I want to make sure that by the time I get to this part of the chest, we're back to kind of a straight stitch direction down the chest instead of like a zigzaggy like because if I were to follow along here like that I don't want to echo that weird bump right there right down here that'd be weird so Have I done here? There we go. So just I can just fill in a couple single stitches in here. And then I'll do like a row here. tangled on my my hoop stand which is a table vise if you're wondering it works very well for me found all the other ones are just too wobbly like the ones that are specifically made for embroidery all right so then yeah that works to row here. I'm just going to come back up since I'm down here. And see, it just, mm, it's just kind of random. I mean, there there is a, there is some method, right? I am I am still sticking with that that general direction, but I'm just kind of like, all right, let's just fill in on this as a row. All right, now what do I need to do? Okay, let's fill in this as a row. like a, a part of a row here I need to fill in. Okay. Now I'll just go back up here. So that's probably one of the weirder shapes you're going to have to fill is, is when you use your orange. That's when you're going to have to get a little creative. Don't overthink it. Probably don't make your stitches as big as mine. It'll look nicer if you don't. Okay, so once I'm done with the orange, I would move to the white color and, and fill this. So with this shape, you know, you're going to do, I would do your outline here first, and then your outline here, and then I would do like a center one just to kind of help with that stitch direction. 
and then just start filling, you know, and it's going to, you know, it's going to fill up down here faster, right? Because it's wider up here. So you're going to have to do like what I just did here, right? I didn't have a full row. I just had a couple stitches to fill in. And what I have to do here, I guess I can just demo that since I'm here. But I just kind of don't know, fill it. <laughs> do the best you can. So I could probably stitch this a hundred times and do it different every time. So if yours doesn't look like mine is, you know, for the stitch direction exactly, don't worry about it. If this isn't making sense, don't worry about it. Just fill it. Just do what makes sense to you in your brain, okay? It's like, I don't even know why I'm worrying about it so much. But I'm sure some people will want to know the method behind the madness. But, you know, I mean, if you're looking at this piece from afar, like who's, who's really going to be looking at that stitch direction and being like, Oh my gosh, she did it wrong. Oh, I don't think anyone. Okay. Let me show you the detail on the eye and then we can move to, I guess we'll do the branch. I'll demo the branch real quick and then we'll do some flowers. We're almost done. I mean, it's going to take you a lot more hours to actually complete the piece. <laughs> All right, so for the eye, I just did a few stitches under the eye. You can do these as back stitch. You can do them as split stitch. I'm just doing them with a single strand. And they're just, these stitches are going over the other stitches. like that okay and then we do a little highlight on the other side of the eye on the actual dark part just like that it gives our little birdie a little life okay all right so I'm gonna move back to this dark color and show you the branch it's oops oh I just un unthreaded my needle on accident. That's all right. Here we go. Okay. So for our branch, uh, my floss is already over here, so that's where I'm starting. But this takes a long time too. So this is just split stitch. You're doing it with two strands of floss. You can actually split like this if you want from below. If you want to do some practicing with your split stitch or you can come up away and go down and split your stitch like this so split from above or split from below technically the first one is real split stitch this is back split stitch it I don't do whatever you want <laughs> You're just trying to fill in the branch. No one's going to know which one you did. So practice the one you want. This is a great one to do while watching TV. It's pretty mindless. So I do the same, same method. I am outlining first. And I kind of do it in segments. So I'll like come over here and be like, well... All right, I guess I should go and fill in what I just did before I get too far away. Fill like there's a 
another stitch to do. Really, it doesn't matter right here because this is going to get covered by the flower. Alright, let's keep going. Yeah, this is, this is kind of a long pattern. Like, I hope you enjoy it. That's kind of what's going on with all these bird patterns is they're What's going on back here? All right, I can see I have all these parked needles and it's kind of, it's catching up with me. I have a disaster on the back. All right, I'm, I'm gonna actually pause here and we will start the flowers. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> so the flowers go last. So once you've stitched your birds, once you've stitched your branches, you can come back and do your flowers. So I, I have a couple different pinks on my needle here. Um, you can use my color suggestions. So we have the ombre effect going from the darker pinks on the bottom and the lighter pinks on top. I'm just going to stitch with what I have as I get there. So don't, don't look at me if you're trying to follow the, the pattern as far as which colors go where. And if you mess some up, like that's okay. Like, you know, if you're like, oh no, I forgot to make this one the light pink. Like it's fine. It's going to look fine. Like, don't stress about it too much. It's just a general suggestion to get you from lighter pink to darker pink other way around okay so here oh before I go too far one thing I forgot to mention so actually before you get here you'll notice my sample hoop I stitched my branches all the way to the edge so obviously you can't stitch this far on a hoop right when it's hooped up because you have the inside of your hoop back here, right? There's wood right back here. So what you need to do is actually remove your embroidery from your hoop and shift it right and left to get those edges. So it's up to you if you want your hoop to look like that or not, or if you just want the printed fabric showing through at that point, I'll leave it up to you to decide. But I would recommend doing that before you do the flowers simply because you don't want to, I mean, they'll be okay, but they might get a little squished. Okay, so we're going to do this one first this one's kind of bigger so i just want to kind of show you guys the method i'm using here so if you want eight petals on here is what then that's what i was doing for my bigger ones i have like my main i don't know what i want to call this i don't know the word guys sorry my brain. Anyways, just just do do what I do, not what I say. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna blame the allergies for my brain. So we're doing like la a lazy daisy essentially. Like if this doesn't make any sense to you and you want all of your lazy daisies to come from this central hole, then then do that. I find when I have eight petals it's just it's a lot to go for through that central hole and so this is what I've been doing instead I go like near the central hole for these I guess is grid the word I was thinking of so this is like the main grid like the main I don't know what word but these are the minor ones those would be the major ones these are like the background petals sort of kind of okay so we'll do we're doing those first. There's one. And then we have two. And you can, you know, if you want to do a guideline like I did just now. Please do. You don't have to use the pen I use. You can use a pencil if you want. Because it's probably going to get covered, right? By these stitches. Three. Oops. What am I stuck on? Something got stuck. Alright, 
So now we're just going to do the other four coming from the center. That's what the black dot is. That is the center of the circles. You can have fun with these because some of these overlap. Some of these are coming up behind a bird or behind a branch. Some of them are on top. So you can see the ones, the detached chain that comes from the center is obviously going to be a little bit bigger. This got weird. It's still weird. I did not fix that. <laughs> if something like that happens and you want to pull out your stitch, I encourage you to do that. What is happening here? Who are you? I don't know what this guy is. I think it's my tail. I have to trim it. Okay. That looks a little better. I don't know if you can see how my floss is all kinked. I think that's part of my problem. This was on a bobbin. So it's like it kind of has a perm. Okay, so that's like what a big one looks like. And you have eight petals. Now, if you have a smaller one, you can do eight petals, or you could do you could do six petals. So for six petals, you would have a peace sign, and then you'd have your minor ones here. So this one's tricky though, because this one is behind this branch. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You're going to fake it. So let's do the let's do the easy ones first. So we have our minor petals. There's my tail again. <laughs> Hi tail, you need to be trimmed and pulled through. to my major ones. Oops. I got stuck on the screw. So, from here, I'm just going to fill in here. I'm just going to come in with like a straight stitch. It's like part of the petal, right? And then same thing on this side. And then I kind of don't like because I have this gap here. I'm actually just going to do a straight stitch here too to fill in that little piece. 
like that. And for those, if you want them a little puffier, you can come back and kind of poof them up like that. Okay, so let me just demo this little guy. What should we do for this one? I'm going to go ahead and just do them all from the center on this small one. We'll just see what happens. This one's kind of like the last one where we had a little interference, and in this case, it's another flower, not branch. Basically, you're you're gonna be doing these lazy daisies and use straight stitches and fly stitches as needed when you have an irregular shape. It's looking really cute, actually. Okay, so I would just do like one stitch here so this looks like it's behind this darker flower in this case. And then, like, if you don't like the fabric showing through like that, and then come back in here with straight stitches to fill in more. So you can come all the way to the center like I did there, or I kind of don't like that because then it's covering up what I just did. You can come in and like sneak your needle back like that. So they're just these little puffball flowers. That was the, the idea is to make these very round, springy, I don't know what they are. They're, I mean, I guess you could think of them as cherry blossoms, but cherry blossoms don't actually look like this, so maybe don't. <laughs> you can see I did a flower here and it was a disaster. So if, if you do that and you had to um, cut some out, you can always kind of mend your fabric like this. But it doesn't really matter because I'm just going to come back in here and make more holes. So let's try this one. I probably should have demonstrated. I just, to cut, I just came in with my scissors and I, I went under like this. I just cut, cut them out and then yanked them out. It felt good. So, uh, I'm stitching the side of my fabric to my work. <sighs> it's not Monday, but it kind of feels like one. The full moon just happened. We'll blame that. Also, I almost forgot there's also these just straight stitch flowers, these really tiny ones. Those are pretty easy to do. I'll show those real quick. And then we just have the tiny leaves to do. So I wanted to do a fly stitch one. Let's try to do it here. So instead of coming back to the center, I'll come back here a little bit above center. like that so you can see how it's a it's like a awkward fly stitch it's like a what is that 
uneven fly stitch, like a falling over fly stitch. So for these teeny little flowers, you just do little stars, just straight stitches all converging in the center. And again with these, if you want to kind of puff these up a little bit, and it looks kind of cute. Trying to figure out how I'm running into my, it's my shutter that sound you hear occasionally, but it's, I'm not touching it. I must be touching something on my desk and I don't realize it. Okay, so that's that. And then to finish, you're just gonna come in and do these straight stitch petals, or excuse me, leaves. And those are real simple. You're gonna use a full strand, you just come up and make, oops. <laughs> You do a better job of keeping the back of your work clean so that doesn't happen. You just do straight stitches. Ta-da! <laughs> That's it. So, you know, do as many or as few of those as you want. You know, cover the guidelines. But if you want to go back and add more green, you definitely can. So, oh, I forgot to tell you about outlining the bird. So, I guess I'll do that right now. So, if you want, you know, this is kind of what the bird's going to look like if you don't outline him, right? It's it's fine. It's really a personal choice if you want that more graphic look. So I just used a single strand of the dark color and I did split stitch. I kind of did back stitch. I kind of just outlined it however I was feeling at that time. Um, <laughs> so you're just making an outline and I just try to keep it as thin as I could. So I outlined the bird and I also did definition where the um, the wings were. So that's what that looks like. Awesome. So I hope you have fun with this project. It's relaxing. It, I love how the finished look is. It just makes me happy. Um, if you have any questions, please send me an email. I'm always happy to help. Okay. Take care.